Bienvenidos y welcome to the Biz Bruja podcast, where reclaiming our powerful intuition, our sacred medicina, embracing our magic and healing ancestral patterns, invoke powerful creations in our own well-being, our lives, familias, community, and our businesses. Remembering that our businesses are so important at this time. I'm the creatrix of this blogcast, the biz bruja herself, Vanessa Codornu, a modern day bruja, fourth generation psychic medium, clinical hypnotist, energy healer, and soul biz mentor and coach. An Argentine-American who started reading adults at 16, became a professional intuitive at 22, and now guides creatives, intuitives, healers, and entrepreneurs to break through fears, connect to the practical power of their intuition so they can serve the world powerfully. Hola, mi gente bella. Hello, beautiful people. I could not let the summer solstice go by, nor the full moon in Capricorn, without dropping in and sharing a little bit of what's to come, what is happening, and to invite you into a deeper perspective and to support you in anchoring more balance, being able to integrate more of the light, of the dark, of the shadow, of the light, of our own authentic selves. Because the truth is, you know, we're not just one thing. We're not just the light. We're not just the pieces that we show the world. We're so much more. And at the end of the day, we have to bless the mess. We're also busy right now, this beginning of summer. I can speak for myself that, um, I, this is my second year at the Harrisburg Fringe Festival. And I've taken an idea that I've developed for the next two and a half, last two and a half years at the Harrisburg Improv Theater, a team called Cosmic Trash, where there's four tarot readers and we come in and we ask the audience for a garbage problem. And then we read them, of course, all in good humor and all in good fun. And then we act out the answers for the people. And I'm taking this last year. I brought it to the Harrisburg. Uh, Fringe Festival. It was successful. It was wonderful. I had an amazing cast of all women from the age of 35 to, I think, 69. And it was an amazing thing to behold, the transition of taking an idea from one type of performance into now something that had a little more structure, but yet it was still improv. And so it was four crazy wild tarot readers and their ancestors and an inner child running wild. This year at the Fringe Festival in 2024, we are coming back as the musical. So the ancestors are gone. I mean, they're there, but they're not on stage with us. This time it's two tarot readers and the tarot archetypes coming to life and what happens. And so been so busy developing that and performing and then teaching, preparing to teach in New York City and preparing to teach here at the Harrisburg Improv Theater that, you know, time has passed and I'm like, oh my God, the summer solstice. But I think you can all relate to that that it's the end of school, it's the end of so many things, and the beginning of a new season that brings with it its own projects, its own um, prioritization, right, of fun, maybe of the kids, etc. And so without further ado, let me go deeper with the summer solstice and then the full moon in Capricorn. So Spiritually speaking, the summer solstice holds a lot of significance across various spiritual and esoteric traditions, often symbolizing the peak of light, right, and the transition into a new phase of growth and abundance. And these are some suggestions uh, for us to be able to still honor it. It happened yesterday in the afternoon on the 20th, and today is June 21st, but it's still worthy of a listen and maybe a meditation and maybe a cleansing of the home and maybe some journaling, right, to dive deeper into this meaning. Now, throughout the world, people have celebrated this, whether it's South America or Europe, so many places all over the world where um, the marking of the change of season, if there is a change of season, becomes a sacred, holy event that reflects the inner world and the outer world, right? As we say, as above, so below, as without, so within. And so understand that this summer solstice symbolizes the light and the dark. It marks the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere where daylight is at its maximum. And spiritually speaking, it can be seen as a time when the forces of light are more potent. So, of course, there's a temptation to pull up the sun card in the tarot, I'll be like, ooh, in the sun, in the sun, or to be tanning out in the sun or to be celebrating outside. And that is correct. And it is 
it is important for us to do that, to celebrate the light. At the same time, it's an auspicious time to also sit with how we sometimes try to hide the dark or our shadow um, in the closet or away from the world, how we favor the positive, what the what society says are positive attributes, right? And hide away la sombra, hide away shadows. And so while it does represent the triumph of light over darkness, it's also important for us to make friends with what we deem as dark, whether it's our messiness or maybe if we're late all the time, some people have felt bad about, you know, not calling back people or not texting in a timely manner. There's so many things that we could be or that we fill our plate with too many things and then we can't fulfill them. I mean, I'm just throwing these out, but there's so many things that humans feel bad about. And so it's a time to focus on the gratitude, to look at our shadow and just love it and know that it is part of the whole of who we are. Another amazing thing that we can focus on during this transition is to connect with the summer solstice as a associating it with the energy of expansion, growth, and abundance. You know, the earth is in full bloom, nature's vitality is at its peak, and this energy can be harnessed to set intentions, manifest goals. So taking a breath in and just asking yourself, you know, where am I showing up in a way that makes me happy? Um, how can I step into my authentic voice, authentic sharing? Is there something that I've been wanting to write or share with the world or even just share with my kids or my family or my siblings or my best friend that I've held back? How can I step into a more expansive state with my own energy, my own gifts, my own talents, and who I truly am, right? So that's just some simple journaling. And here we are, right, in this moment of celestial alignment where the Earth's axial tilt is most inclined towards the sun. And spiritually, this alignment can be viewed as an opportunity to align ourselves with our true purpose and higher selves, right? Rising above the muck of everyday responsibilities and obligations and being late or, you know, traffic, all the things. And as we breathe in and really seek that inner balance and ask ourselves, how can we more, how can we align in a way that feels good to us? You know, we're stepping into summer and so, el verano, and so how do we allow for more ease to flow within our lives? It is a time to connect to nature. It's a time to honor Earth's abundance. Even if you go outside today, the day after on the full moon, sit on the Earth and give thanks or stand with bare feet and just be like, gracias Pachamama, thank you Mother Earth. You know, we do so much to Mother Earth and to our own bodies and to the world that we take ourselves and our bodies and the Earth for granted and nature. And so taking a moment to just allow yourself to connect. And if you want to leave something out for the fairies, if you want to leave some chocolate out, or if you want to cleanse your home to celebrate these uh, changing cycles in nature and in your personal life, please do so. The summer solstice also invites us to reflect our own journey, right, of personal transformation. How do we let go of old patterns that maybe guided us to survive and became destructive over time. We may have pulled away from people or maybe stepped into a big people pleaser to survive and be liked. And now maybe it's just not working out for us in our relationship or in our jobs. ¿Cómo podemos brillar nuestra luz? How can we shine our light even brighter so we can feel comfortable in our power? How can we empower ourselves, right? Just because something was true in the past doesn't mean that it serves us now. And so that happened on the 20th. We're still feeling the effects of it. Today is um, the full moon. And I mean, it's happening actually, yes, tomorrow morning, Saturday. So I'm ahead of time. Today's Friday. Um, but this full moon in Capricorn is not, it's, it's, it's very important because it is inviting us to honor the wisdom of the elder, and not just the outside elder like our ancestors, but the inner elder, that wise part of us, the wise old woman, the wise old man, the crone archetype, the pattern of power that shows wisdom through age. And why do I say that it's the crone, right? Why do I call it the elder? Well, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, right? And Saturn, with the ring around it, is known for its connection to structure, to discipline and wisdom. And it's the wisdom that's gained through experience. It's not like knowledge just gained from a book and from a class. It's like the hard-won wisdom 
of learning, trying things, failing, taking risks, y aprendiendo con el tiempo, right? Learning through time. And that is the energy of Saturn. You know, I would say it's discipline, but, you know, it doesn't have to be accompanied with a whip or boots unless you prefer. It's really making friends with the energy of Saturn because we all have it in our natal chart. And also as an archetype, we're going to need it because talent without discipline, talent without practice, talent without application is just that, it's talent. But when we want to build something or we want to build a family or write a play or be in a show or learn improv or learn macrame or learn anything, we have to put in the time. We have to do the time to create what we're wanting to create. And on this occasion, the moon is in the sign of Capricorn and it represents the sea goat, right? A lot of times we see the goat climbing up the mountain and it's us in our lives. How are we going to climb up and make it past the challenges by using the deep wisdom of our elders, ancestors, and our own inner uh, elder, inner crone? Now, the full moon is opposite, right? Let's talk a little bit about the full moon, then I'll talk about what it's opposite. It's opposite the sun and cancer tomorrow, Saturday, because right now it's still in Gemini. But tomorrow it's opposite the sun and cancer. So Capricorn traditionally is an energy linked to the father, the energy of male energy of patriarchy sometimes, right? It's seen as that. But hopefully now we're looking at it as like like a uh, um, divine masculine, right? The energy of the divine masculine. And then we're talking about cancer and cancer is the energy of the sacred feminine. And so we've got the sun and the feminine. We've got the moon and the masculine. And of course, I use these labels, not because I believe in them, but this is the common language that we use in the world right now because to me, energy is energy, but there's these archetypes and labels set up so I can speak to you more plainly. We could all be speaking the same language, right? So I just wanted to clarify that, that I'm not that narrow-minded. It's just that this is the language that we speak, and so that is how I'm setting it up so more people can understand, right, most of us. And so as we're highlighting the themes of knowledge and wisdom and discipline and going the extra mile, right, caminando el camino, walking the path, we're also highlighting the themes of nurturing and emotional depth. And so at this moment, with the fullness of the moon, a full moon is, it's all, it's the moon in all of her glory. ¿no? La luna en toda su gloria. And it's a time where we can step back for a moment and breathe in the fullness of it all, literally. Um, and it sheds light and brings light to a particular area of our lives. So if you go to alabe.com or any other place where there's a free natal chart, where you find Capricorn is where you're going to find the lunation happening. The full moon is coming up into that particular house. There are 12 houses that cover different aspects of your life and potentialities. And so the particular house that it's lighting up is where you're probably going to get more wisdom, more understanding, and maybe even feel emotional pain and then allow yourself to move through some healing, right? But it's not like, oh my God, we're headed towards pain because it's a full moon. No. It's just that realizations can bring up when we realize certain things, right? Like we're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. Nos damos cuenta. We can realize that, okay, this is the reality of what it is. It sucks. I'm going to cry right now. I'm going to be upset, but let me face it. So it's that moment where we allow ourselves to feel our feels over realizations, over understanding that some people won't change, that maybe we won't change, that what we hoped for maybe won't come true, or maybe that it will, but we're going to have to work extra hard and nurture ourselves during that journey, right, of accomplishment. And so these two energies are being um, supported, highlighted. How do I nurture myself as I also build, as I also have discipline, as I gain experience and wisdom in my life in different areas, how do I also self-care so I'm not just a workaholic or pushing myself? You know, because there's such a thing as like a personal development junkie. I think somebody labeled it um, many years ago, like decades ago. We can get like, we can take the energy of addiction and the energy of like going after something intensely, whether it's food or sex or gambling or let's empower myself. And so taking that breath in. Cada cosa tiene su lugar. Everything has its place in our life. And so breathing in 
a little more of that balance, right? And there will be times in our lives where we just have to do what we have to do, right? You have a newborn baby, well, you're going to stay up to take care of it. You can try to get help and you can also do some self-care, but at the end of the day, right, you're going to take care of that newborn baby. Or when you're moving and you have to pack and you have to unpack, there are moments in life that will demand a lot of us. But when we get to, when we get past those moments, Trying to get some balance is going to be really important for us because we're going to recharge, nos recargamos, to keep, to keep dancing through this life, right? Um, some other things are happening during this full moon that are particularly compelling. And that the, there are aspects to Chiron, Saturn, and Pluto. Pluto is conjunct today, right, Friday. And so, you know, if anybody knows Pluto, Pluto ain't joking. It's the planet of transformation. It like grabs you, drags you into the underworld, whether you like it or not. I have been dragged and I have risen and I will probably be dragged again, right? Most of us in our own hero's journey will be taken down and then we will rise up again. And that's the energy of Pluto. And it stays in a sign for a lot of years. It's been sitting in my eighth house of death and you know, joint accounts and resources and real estate, birth, life, and death for many years. And years ago, I was training with Malata Sakic, who is amazing at business astrology. I said, oh my God, I'm looking and Pluto's going to be sitting in my eighth house for years. She goes, what do you think it means? I'm like, many people in my family are going to die or pass over. I might get married. I might inherit something. I might buy a house. I'm going to have success. And it's going to be like me going through a birth, die, death, and life rebirth, Right. That's what happened. You know, 2020, half my family passed. Um, I had even some, an aunt passed two weeks ago. And in the last few years, so many of my grade school friends and so many folks um, that I've known, worked with, also crossed over. Now, that doesn't mean that Pluto is bringing death to everyone, okay? It's not that. It's that it's in its home house, the eighth house. I also gained a lot of self-mastery. I tripled my business during the worst year of my life, got married the second year, you know, after the worst year of my life, and we bought a home the worst year of my life. So the real estate, birth, death, and life, releasing and being able to move through the phases, it helped me move more into more maturity. And in fact, I actually stepped into being a future ancestor and being the elder in North America. I have older folks in South America um, and in Spain, but not here in in the United States. I am actually the eldest cousin. And so there's that, right? You're like, oh, crap. I'm in some ways the matriarch of the family. I'm not that old, please. But here we are. And so wherever Pluto has been in the last few years for you, um, you're going to, you know, understand that there's been somewhere where you've been dragged, but you've gained wisdom or you've gained some mastery. Now, it's also making... Um, interesting aspects to Chiron, right? The wounded healer, which helps us confront these old wounds and embrace the healing power of this acceptance and maturity. And and of course, Saturn, the taskmaster, Pluto, as we just talked about, transformation. And so if you really think about it, you see that the journey of the moons and astrology is a way for us to kind of be guided through our own very personal and nuestro camino muy personal, a very personal journey of self-actualization, right? Through birth, through death, through rebirth, right? Whether it's our career, our love life, our bodies going through things. And so we're invited deeply to pay attention to these rhythms that are moving through our lives. You know, there's nothing that remains untouched and unchanged. It doesn't matter how great your quote-unquote aging Yo, you're going to wake up one day and there's a wrinkle and you're going to be like, hola, <laughs> I, get, I earned you. And so allowing yourself to move with the tides, to go with the flow and tap into that wisdom that you've gained through life. When I was talking about full moon and Capricorn earlier, I talked about honoring the crone wisdom. You know, within each and every one of us, there's an elder. There's an elder who's watching. We've already lived a certain amount of time, whether we're 25 or 45 or 75 and listening to the podcast. And so, esto es como la sabiduría de la abuela, right? Grandma's wisdom, the crone wisdom, somebody who's been through things already and can teach us the value of patience and perseverance. This full moon can help us reflect on our long-term goals, 
right? And the steps we still need to achieve them and what has been accomplished, how far we've come. We're always focusing on what we haven't achieved yet and haven't reached yet. But yet, let's take that moment to celebrate in the solstice weekend and be like, you know what? I may have been up and down and sideways, but I'm here. I was talking to a friend who did a lot of healing work online, just as I did, you know, helping others, supporting, running free circles, teaching classes. I said, girl, we're not the same people we were in 2020. So our businesses are going to reflect that, how we live our lives. And this is for all of us. Even in the last four years, we've changed. We've deepened, we've released, we've grown. And so take a moment to really step into like that wiser part of yourself and ask yourself, you know, how have I grown? With a very compassionate and objective view, right? Not chastising, not punishing. And so then when you've gazed upon those goals, when you've gazed upon your life, when you've been able to face yourself, you know, in the areas where you wish you would have said more, done more, the areas where you think you did too much, and just give yourself compassion. Like, look, we're all doing the best that we can, right? And then allow yourself to set realistic plans and work steadily towards them, right? Just like the crone imparts her knowledge gained over her lifetime, we also have knowledge, sabiduria para compartir, right? We have knowledge to share. Also, embrace the lessons of Chiron during this lunar phase. And Chiron is the wounded healer. We all have that. You know, as we gaze on our life and see our wounds and see how those wounds have impacted the way we behave in the world, you know, are we ready to give up the story that we're the outsider or the one that always gets punished or the one that always wins or the one that always takes everything on, right? Or the one that like rises above every challenge. I remember getting through all of these challenges with family and moves and wedding move three times and all the things that happened in COVID. And I was like, okay, spirit, yo no necesito esto. Yo no lo necesito. I don't need to prove anything anymore. Somewhere inside of me, I think I over... I over-associated myself with this like heroine that would climb any mountain, swim any sea, rise up, you know, rise up beyond anything. And I was like, uh, I've won that award, even though nobody's given it to me. I give it to myself. I've done enough surviving of things at this age, at this time, several decades in to be like, no necesito más. I don't need any more. Of course, life will always give us more, but I also was like, please, can you bring in more ease, right? Can we, can I experience more ease? And I set myself free from any pattern of having to rise against these like odds. And so if you're someone who feels like you've been through a lot of odds recently, you've been challenged like deeply, breathing in, acknowledging everything you've conquered, everything you've had to move through, everything you've survived, everything you've thrived through, and just connecting to this transformative power of this full moon and just asking your subconscious, your deepest self to help you release what no longer serves and to allow you to experience what it means to feel nurtured. And it starts with us, right? If we're gazing to the outside world and we're just sad and mad, oh, nobody's listening to me, nobody's giving me what I need, well, the question becomes, am I teaching them to do this, right? And some of us are in relationships with narcissists, so I'm not talking about that, and I'm not talking about some of the challenges people have. We can't generalize. Some people have children with a lot of issues that they're not going to you know, get rid of. And some people are living in situations they can't get out of. So all the compassion and love at the same time asking ourselves, you know, why am I putting up with this boss if I know that I can get another job or at least try to get one? There's spaces where we can empower ourselves. And so allowing ourselves to feel our feelings and to notice where we can nurture ourselves more and where could we also step up for ourselves more, speak up in our relationship, speak up in our jobs and, you know, attempt to and hopefully be able to shift some things so we can receive what we need in order to keep moving, grooving and flowing in our lives. And so if I leave you with anything else, I leave you with the thought that, hmm, Cleanse your space, sit for a moment and look upon your life as a beautiful, beautiful painting, a beautiful work of art, one that you co-create with the unseen world, that you co-create with other humans. And look upon this beautiful painting as a painting that is teaching you and yet also recording your most glorious descent into the underworld, your battles in the middle world and your pleasures and joys 
and then you rise into these spaces of wisdom and expansion and fulfillment and love. You know, if if life is unfolding for us the way we most wanted to, we've experienced all of it. I don't I don't know that many of us get through life without really going through all of it, having love, losing love, um, going through fears, going through times of joy and expansion. And so look upon your life as this beautiful masterpiece and then see where you'd like to add a particular color. <laughs> I'm like, Vanessa's getting corny. And just add that in. Get your special little brush. <laughs> Make a little tree. <laughs> add whatever you want to add. We're not, you know, simply on this ride that we've buckled into and now we're forced to ride the ride the way some God is making us do it. We can shift some of our realities, at least with awareness, at least with sometimes our own um, shifts in our thinking and our way of being and, um, and handling the world that we have, which by no means is perfect in any way. We are dealing with racism. We are dealing with unequal opportunities and injustice and a lot of pain on the planet, which I'd brought up in the last one. And so, or I think two ago, two ago, but know that we can, let's see what we can do with what we have. You know, what can we do with what we have? And if it doesn't work, how can we just take that paint and add a little tree and add a little house, right? Where there is none. I'm sending you so much love. Excuse me for being corny. Um, But that just came to me through my heart and know that I'm thinking of you all and sending you all so much love. And let me know how this landed with you. Mucho amor.